Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new part of the Hardware Legend video series. On my table you can see two dual GPUs because in this video we will start taking a closer look at the dual GPUs I have in my collection. If you have been following my channel for a very long time you should know or remember the times where I was sitting on this side actually in front of my daily rig on an, in front of a table where I had my GPU collection in the back so basically Asus RS, Asus Mars and a lot of special cards or for example here in the back you should see a Radeon Pro Duo or HD 6990 and basically I own almost all the dual GPU cards that exist. There are only a few missing in my collection, mostly cards that didn't make it to the market, some cards that were only exhibited at exhibitions and stuff, but most of them are in my collection and in today's video we will take a look at the 7950GX2 and the 7900GTX Duo or 7900GX2. Going by the name, you could think that those are two different GPUs, but they're actually not. They're actually exactly the same. So the 7900 GTX Duo, which is the official name in the internet, it's often referred as the 7900 GX2, but that's actually not correct. If you take a look at this card, this card is manufactured in the end by Nvidia. If we're taking a look at a sticker, it says 7900 GTX Duo. And I would actually think that if Nvidia gives the card this name officially which we should actually go by this name and not what other people were saying and this card is very similar to the 7950 gx2 which is actually the consumer card of this version because this version was only manufactured oem this means it was put into consumer systems by different vendors so Vendors could buy this card from Nvidia, put it in uh, systems and sold the system entirely. It was not available for the consumer market, for the retail market by individual sales. So you could not just order it online. That was only possible for the 7950GX2. The reason why Nvidia decided to make the 7950GX2 is mainly compatibility. If we compare both cards, Obviously the first thing you will notice is the length. The length of this card is absolutely massive. Even compared to a 2080 Ti, this card is about one to two centimeters longer. So even by today's standards, this is a very long card. And going back to the year 2006, which is the year when this card came to the market, this card actually came to the market around April 2006 and this card around June 2006. One more thing is the power connectors. We have two six pin power connectors on here, which was not really that common in 2006. The six pin power connectors only made it really to the market with G46, G47, but then typically you only had like one, or often you had to use like a Molex to six pin adapter because a lot of PSUs were not ready yet for having six pin power adapters for GPUs. So that's why a lot of the medias back then said, wow this card it's consuming power over the PCI Express slot so maximum 75 watt and then in addition we have two times six pin which allowed a card in theory to consume up to additional 150 watt if we go by the specs. Obviously if you watched my six pin eight pin video lately you should know that the specs don't really mean much. Same goes for this card because both cards have exactly the same power consumption. The only thing is that Nvidia decided to make the consumer card, which is the 7950GX2, decided to remove one six pin because it's absolutely not necessary power consumption wise. And they shortened the PCB because basically there was enough space to still have all the components on there, but make it a lot smaller for compatibility reasons. Talking about power consumption numbers, I actually checked that in 3D Mark 03, compared both cards, compared it with the current clamp and also the total system power consumption. Total system power consumption with the 7900 GTX Duo was 117 watt, while with the 7950GX2 in 3D Mark 03, I had a total system power consumption of 115 watt, which is two watt difference, which is something you could consider tolerance, and so it's basically the same. There is no difference. The only difference is that you needed two six pin connectors in order to make this card boot which was not necessary back then because you can see if the total system power consumption with a 9900k in 3d micro 3 is 117 watt it's really not necessary to have two times six pin connectors so it made sense that nvidia was going for the consumer card with only one six pin connector 
Everything else is identical. So we have two PCBs on the card, both carry the G71 GPU and also both uh, carry 512 megabyte GDDR3, which is clocking at 600 megahertz. The memory GPU is clocking at 500 megahertz on both cards. Also the voltage is identical. We have 1.25 volt for the GPU and about 1.85 volt for the memory. I also compared and measured both voltages on both cards. Looking at some data from the GPU, I actually had to write that down because it's too much information, but the G71, if we compared it to the TU102 from uh, 2080 Ti, from today's uh, standards, 2080 Ti has a die size of 754 square millimeters and it carries 18.6 billion transistors. So that's 24.6 million transistors per square millimeter. That's a massive density like density of, of nowadays GPU is absolutely insane now the G71 was manufactured in 90 nanometers so it's a lot bigger manufacturing process the GPU had a size of 196 square millimeters and it carried 278 million transistors not billion and it only had a density of 1.4 million transistors per square millimeter so basically this card contains 3% of the transistors of a 2080 Ti. A single GPU, a single G, uh, G71 GPU carries 1.5% of the transistors of a uh, 2080 Ti. So yeah, that's absolutely insane. If you just consider you need like more than 50 of those cards in order to make up the same transistor count like a 2080 Ti. Insane how technology uh, developed. In the next step, we will just take a closer look at the cards and compare what's the difference between the 7950GX2 and the 7900GTX Duo. Starting off with the 7900GTX Duo, which is actually my favorite over the 7950GX2, the main reason is the cooling solution. So looking at this cooling solution, it's much nicer. We have a lot more fins. The cooler is also bigger, which I mean the fan is a lot bigger, so the air intake is better. The fan can spin at a lower RPM to have the same amount of cooling, the same amount of air going through the fins. And because we have more fins, higher surface area, the cooling of this card is much better than the 7950GX2. One difference is also that we have two SLI connectors on here. So if we were um, about to run quad SLI, so to connect two cards, we needed two SLI bridges and for the 7950GX2 we only needed one SLI bridge in order to run quad SLI. We have two 6-pin power connectors as I mentioned before and one specialty also of the 7900GTX Duo is the fact that we have cutouts inside the back PCB which allowed a better air intake for the card which was in the sandwich position. So the temperature of this card used to be much better than of the 7950GX2. If we compare this can see the fan is much smaller looking at the fins the fins do not really look that nice i'm not really sure why they made this very weird shape of the fins they really don't look very well organized or very nice um, we only have one sli connector as mentioned before and we only have one six pin connector and we do not have the air intake at the back pcb so that's basically the main difference between the 7950gx2 and 7900 gtx duo we will now take a closer look at the 7900GTX Duo. I never disassembled this one myself. I'm not really sure how long it takes, but we will take a look together at how this card looks underneath. This is the cooling block of the 7900 GTX Duo, which really reminds me of, for example, a 7800 GT or 7900 GT. That's the kind of cooling solution that was very common back then. You can see that there's quite some dust in here. That's mainly because this is the sandwich cooler, the one that was sitting in between, and it was really hard 
to clean this one. So that's the only thing why I'm not really, I'm actually a big fan of the dual PCB, dual GPU solutions, but that's the only downside that those solutions really had. So you couldn't really access this cooler, so you couldn't really clean it. As you can see, there's still plenty of dust in here. If we're taking a look what it's really covering. So of course it was covering the GPU itself. It was covering all the memory ICs, all the GDDR3 modules, and also the NVIDIA bridge chip. So if we take a look at the PCB quickly, it's, it's just a massive and very unpopulated uh, PCB. Everything on the right here is the voltage supply. So underneath here we have the GPU VRMs. This is the memory voltage supply up here. If we're taking a look at the back, I think this should be probably the memory voltage supply controller and that's probably of the GPU, but I didn't look it up, so that could be wrong. Also, the air intake, the cutout inside the back PCB here. On this sticker, it's actually written 7900 GTX Duo. Taking a look at the front side, we had the eight memory modules on here. In the middle, we have the G71. GPU from NVIDIA. On the left side, this is a PCI Express bridge chip. I think it should be very, very similar to the NF200, which we saw later on cards like the 9800GX2. I'm not sure if it's the same. I think they involved uh, in between, but I didn't check it. There's at least not written NF200 on it, but it's still a PCI Express bridge chip. You can see all the PCI Express lanes. The 16 lanes are going from the PCI Express slot into this chip. And then we have 16 lanes going to this GPU and we have 16 lanes going to the left, basically to this SLI bridge, which is connecting to the other PCB. So basically this is nothing else than a PCI Express bridge chip. Now both cards in comparison. On the bottom, we have the bottom PCB of the 7950GX2 and this is the 7900GTX Duo. You can see it's very similar. So we have the bridge chip, we have the G71, which is the same here. We have an SLI bridge, which is sitting here and here. We have this additional SLI bridge on the 7900GTX Duo, which I'm not really sure what it is for. We also have this additional connector, which is sitting somewhere in the power area. So I think it could be power related, but I'm not really sure what it's for. I couldn't measure any power on here. So it's maybe some kind of data transfer or, or whatever, but I'm not really sure what this is actually for. Here we have the voltage supply for the GPU. So th those two phases are for the GPU and this phase is for the memory. So basically all Nvidia did was shrinking all of this into this. You can see it's much more uh, space concern, so this card was a little bit more space efficient than this one. Also comparing the cooler, this cooler is much smaller. We have a copper plate on here, which is to spread the heat a little bit better. Then we have this uh, like aluminum heat sink, with, which contains all the fins for cooling, but it's really not as nice as of the 7900GTX Duo. We are in Windows with the 7900GTX Duo and we are in Windows 7. We're actually using C390, so it's still possible to use such an old GPU with C390. I tried to use it with Windows 10, which was really a problem. There's one driver version, it's version 308 something. It kind of works. I can get it to work, but only with a single GPU. If I enable SLI, I have a black screen and it doesn't work anymore. Same goes for the 7950GX2, same problem there. So I can kind of say that it's not a hardware issue, it's a software problem. So I went back to Windows 7, which works so much smoother, so much easier. I'm using the Forceware 285.62, which is one I still have had on one of my USB drives. You can see the GPU is running happily at 500 megahertz on the GPU, 600 on the memory. Sensors, we can see 48 degrees Celsius. Something I want to show you is Riva Tuner. Some of you, if you have been in this scene for a very long time, you might actually still know Riva Tuner. It's a very old overclocking or tuning software that was yeah, used like 10 years ago. And uh, actually Riva Tuner is already too new for this card. I think this Riva Tuner version, it's version 2.24. It was from something like 2009. So it doesn't really work with the Forceware 285.62. If you want to do that, you have to go to Riva Tuner system, scroll down and there you have to do force driver version and here you enter the number of your driver without the point. So it's just 28562. If you did that, you have to restart it and it says driver emulation mode and then it works. Then we can go to this where it says system settings and here we can actually overclock the card. So we have performance 3D. For the 7900 GTX Duo, we cannot set the fan setting, which is interesting. In the Riva Tuner with the 7950 GX2, we can set the fan speed to 
30, 50, 100 percent. That's not possible with the GTX Duo, not really sure why. But we can overclock the card. So for example, we can go from 500 to 550. It's very easy, very, I just love the Reaver Tuner. It's a tool I have, I used for such a long time, even with GeForce 8, GeForce 9, like uh, 9800 GX2 and all of those cards you can see. Clock is applied, SLI is active, enabled with two GPUs. We could also overclock the memory, but I really have no clue what this card is capable of. I also don't want to ruin it because it's one of my favorite parts in my collection. So we will use 3D Mic 03, which is also one of my favorite benchmarks. Used it for such a long time, especially with GeForce 8, GeForce 8800 GT, which was G92, one of my favorite cards. Mother Nature Subtest GT4 is the one I always use for pre-testing my cards. That's what we will just use now for testing if 550 MHz on a GPU works. It's 10% overclock. Uh, you can see resolution is uh, very low, detail is also very funny, so 180 FPS. I actually have no idea if the performance is even in line, it looks kind of slow, not really sure why, but I also didn't spend time on driver testing and all that. Driver is also still set to performance and everything, so I didn't really tune the benchmark for performance. I just want to show you that the card is still running, everything is working fine. Even on C390 you just have to use Windows 7 to get it to work. Reva Tuner is the tool to go to if you want to clock those cards. That's something I wanted to show you. If you want to tune, uh, especially the older benchmarks like 3D Mic 03, 001, Reva Tuner is also very helpful for adjusting um, the level of detail, the LOD. So we can do LOD tweaking, which kind of makes the benchmark looks really crappy, but it will uh, give you a lot of performance gains in especially the older benchmarks. So that's something I wanted to show you. Card is still up and running. I'm really happy to own this piece of hardware. It's uh, very rare, very hard to find. One of my favorite pieces in my collection. So next video will not be about a GPU, but it will also feature something very special. Of course, I will not say what it will be yet, but I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.